So today we're taking a look at a brand new NAS from Synology. Now this is a 1019 Plus and this is their new flagship NAS. Now if you guys are subscribed to the channel, you know that I'm a big fan of Synology and all of their products are reviewed. The DS918 Plus, which is another network attached storage and the main difference between the two is that this has five drive bays while the DS918 Plus only has four. So we're gonna jump into the differences a little bit later, just a quick comparison, just to see which one to purchase. But today we're focusing on the new new flagship NAS. Now Synology does it better than anyone in the business. They make their interface extremely easy to use and navigate. Right now we're looking at the web portal. You can see you have your apps on the desktop. You do have additional applications. If you're wondering why would I need a network attached storage? Well most people get it because they get additional storage for their files. They also get their own personal cloud service. So instead of paying for Google or paying for Dropbox, you have your own personal cloud service. You do have data backup options. But my favorite use for this NAS is to use it as a media server and I use Plex and this is where all my movies, my TV shows as well as my music is stored and I can access this on the go on my phone, on another computer, in a web browser. Make your content really easy to access. So I've done a full Plex setup and I'll probably do another one here in the future but if you guys want to check out that old Plex setup I'll put a card in the top right right now. So without further ado let's go ahead and take a look at the 1019 Plus from Synology. <laughs> So here are some of the highlights of the DS1019 Plus. It comes with an Intel J3455 quad-core processor. This ranges from 1.5 up to 2.3 gigahertz. It does support H.265, 264, as well as MPEG-2 VC1, and the maximum resolution is 4K, and this is 4096 by 2164. It does come pre-installed with four gigs of DDR3L memory, and this is a 1866 bus speed, and this is expandable up to eight gigabytes. So let's take a look around the DS1019 Plus. So first of all, in the box, you do have a quick start guide. I definitely uh, recommend go ahead and read in any guide that come with your products, guys. It's gonna tell you everything you need to know, how to set it up properly, and how to get up and running. Screws, mounting screws for your hard drive. So this does take 3.5 as well as 2.5 inch hard drives, both mechanical and uh, SSD. You have the keys for the drive base, so it gives you an option to go ahead and secure your drive base. It does come with a power brick along with the power cable. And as far as the wattage, this has an output of 12 volts, 10 amps, and of course this is for indoor use only. And lastly, it does come with two ethernet cables. As far as the NAS itself, you do have the key holes to lock your drive base. So right now they're open, so you can go ahead and use this guy right here to go ahead and lock it up, just to give you a little bit more security. Now very important guys, it is labeled drive one all the way through five. And uh, definitely if you guys have this filled, especially, and you wanna do some cleaning or some maintenance, or you wanna uh, add new drives, whatever the case is, you wanna make sure you know which drive goes in which bay. Very important, because you can't just put them back in randomly because it will cause you some issues. So keep note of where your drives are going. On the side, you do have the status LED right here. You also have this one all the way through five. You do have a USB three port. And you do have the power button on the bottom. Other side, you have the Synology logo. Same thing on the opposite side. And these are just basically vents um, that's made into the logo. On the rear, you do have two cooling fans. You have two gigabit ethernet port, and these can be configured for failover or it can be aggregated just to get the most throughput for your network. You do have a reset button right here. You do have your eSATA connection. So this is where you'll add the expansion bays, the additional five bays, and you can expand this up to 10 hard drives. Below that, you do have your power plug. You have another USB port, and you do have the Kensington lock. Now on the bottom, you do have two M.2 slots, guys, and this is for fast caching. So easy way to explain fast caching is basically allows your disk station or your NAS to work a little bit better when multiple people or multiple files are being requested or downloaded or uploaded at the same time. So let's go ahead and take a look at the inside of the NAS. So, so big shout out to Synology once again for sending me this disk station out to review. Also, big shout out to Seagate. This is probably the best drive for your NAS, guys. So if you guys are not aware, it's not recommended to use regular hard drives in the network of that storage. You wanna get a NAS-specific hard drive, and that will give you the best performance as well as durability. So the rest of the bays are empty. Let's go ahead and pull out natural slots. Now, of course, this does take the regular 3.5 inch hard drive, but it also takes the 2.5 inch. You can see the mounting holes right here. So you just attach it to there, 
slide it in and it works the same. So inside of the NAS, of course, you can see the connection for your hard drive. But also if you look right there, this is where your RAM will be. So according to the specs, this NAS comes with four gigs of RAM. But looking at this, look like we have two four gig sticks. So big shout out to Synology again. Look like they went ahead and upgraded the NAS for me. So let me just pull it out. So if you guys are looking to purchase additional RAM, you do have the information. So there it is, DDR3L, bus speed is 1866, it's four gigs of course, and I will be leaving a link in the description if you guys wanna go ahead and pick one up. So I wanna show you how to set up the DS1018 just to get started. And uh, of course, what I normally do is do some follow-up videos. This makes a great Plex server, a great cloud station. Done some videos on the DS918 Plus and so many possibilities. I'm gonna show you guys once we get into the software. Before we do, quick side-to-side -side comparison of the 918 versus the 1018 Plus. So essentially, this is 99% the same network attached storage. However, this does have an extra bay, which gives you more storage. And if you guys are asking, is the 918 being phased? out it's a definite no so how Synology is looking at it is that the 1019 is just an upgrade a step above the 918 for um, small businesses home use or someone that just needs a little extra storage with a comparison this holds five this holds four this is expandable up to nine and this is expandable up to 10 hard drives and as a standalone the 1019 will give you 60 terabyte while the 918 will give you 48 terabyte however when it's expanded 1019 give you 120 and the 918 gives you 108. Besides that, everything is identical. So let's go ahead and get this booted. I'm gonna show you how to get it set up, get it started, and also I'm gonna do a quick run through of the interface, show you some of the great features of the Disk Station Manager or DSM. So getting the NAS connected and configured is pretty straightforward. So make sure you have a network connection, so plug in your ethernet port in the back, and also go ahead and power it on. Give it a couple minutes for it to completely boot up. Once it boots up, we're gonna launch our browser. So once you have your browser launched, we're gonna to go to find.synology.com. Now we'll automatically check your network to see if there's a NAS or Synology product that's available for setup. So here it is right now, found the NAS right away. You can see it's a 1019 plus, gives you the IP address, the MAC address, and tells you that it's ready. So some people do have issues finding your NAS. So if you have any issues, you need to download the Synology Assistant. And I'll put a link in the description where you can go ahead and download it. It's on the Synology website. You click on your product and the Synology Assistant will be available. So go ahead and launch the Synology Assistant if you're having issues. So this is a fail safe guys and like I said I've had issues connecting before I had to reset my 918 plus and couldn't find it with the web browser and this was a lifesaver so you can see it picked up the disk station and it also picked up my Synology router so from here you can select what you want you can connect to it you can map drive you can set up wake on land and you can do some other cool things so back to the web browser let's go ahead and connect so it's going to ask you to set up an admin account for this device. This station manager update and maintenance. So protect your this station important data. So install the latest automatically. You can install important updates automatically. Notify me and let me install them manually. So completely up to you. I'm just going to hit notify. And you can pick the dates where you want to be notified. Run smart tests to check health periodically. Definitely recommend leaving those. Enable bad sector warning and drive. Definitely recommend leaving those two options checked. Um, basically, that can prevent you from losing data if um, this service is not running. So I'm going to click next. And it's going to ask you to set up a quick connect account. Now, I do have one already. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and sign in. I'm just going to click right here. Allow me to find it. And let's go ahead and jump into it. So device analytics. Synology needs help. So if you guys wanted to send some data back to Synology, you can go ahead and do so. I'm going to go ahead and click yes. This is your privacy statement. Agree. And right off the bat, it's giving you a quick tutorial how to get around the system. So tip one, access all built-in installed apps from the main menu. Tip two, discover more applications. So this is basically your package center, guys. So if you want to download uh, anything from your app store or package center, this is where you'll go. This is for your settings. So this is basically your control panel. You can find a ton of different settings. I'm gonna go through some of it for you. We have some health information, help, and here we are, guys. So let me do a quick run through again. So main menu, this has all your built-in applications. Whenever you see a one or a notification next to a certain app, that means there's either an update or there's something that needs your attention. Control panel, 
you can see there is an update available and we're going to go ahead and do that right now i'll go ahead and fast forward the video and i'll come back when it's done installing so just updating let's do a quick run through of the nas and some of the things that you can do with it so first of all main menu these are all your applications that's pre-installed so you do have your storage manager let's go ahead and check that out so i do have two discs they're not used right now and i do have three slots that's available go down to volume no volumes created as of yet, but I can go ahead and set that up. Storage pool. There's no storage pool. As far as the hard drives and SSDs, you can see the two discs that I have installed. Both of them are four terabytes and you can see the information right there. Hot spare, nothing there. So SSDs, we didn't put any SSDs on the bottom. So this, of course, is going to remain empty. So one of the first things you want to do is get your drives up and running. Now, currently, I do have two drives. But if you guys are planning to add additional drives, you can add them later. And it will essentially go through a process. Let's go back to volume. We're going to hit create. And it gives you a couple options, guys. So this will create a SHR volume, which optimizes the performance in space. Or you can do a custom. And Synology provides an awesome tool that will help you calculate what rate configuration is probably going to work best. It gives you a breakdown on how much storage you're going to have with your configuration. So right now, I know that I do have two 4 terabyte hard drives. So I'm going to click 4 terabyte. going to click it again. And scroll down a little bit. You can see the type of configuration you can have. So coarse green is for your available space. Four is for the unused space, and this is basically your mirror or your backup for your data. So SHR stands for Synology Hybrid RAID, and basically it's just an automated RAID management system that's developed by Synology. It works pretty well. So below that, you can see I don't have enough hard drives in the system to have a RAID 5. If I'll go to RAID 2, same thing. RAID 0, 8 terabytes. Not sure if you guys want to go ahead and do that. Rate right, 10, insufficient. So for this setup, we're going to stick with the SHR. All right, so we already concluded we're going to use SHR. So we're going to click Next. All right, so both this, we're going to select both of them. Go through the process. All right, it's going to tell you all data will be erased. It's going to basically format your hard drive and it's going to make it usable for your storage. Click OK. Gives you another option. So BTRFS tells you that it's recommended for this type of system uh, ext4 and basically tells you that this is widely used for linux and can easily be migrated to this station running earlier versions of dsm so i'm just going to leave the btrfs for now click next again click apply so it gives you a brief summary with the two discs this is the amount of storage i'm going to end up with so a little bit on the four terabyte click apply so once that's created, you can create your shares, you can start um, making folders, whatever you need to do to go ahead and start using this efficiently. So I'm just going to minimize this and just have it run in the background. So you guys will notice you do have some widgets right here in the top right, and this is totally customizable. So from here, you can unpin it, you can minimize it, you can change the position. But if you hit the plus button, you can select storage what users are connected and this just kind of drags down and you can see you have more information here customizable however you want it you do have that option minimize it put it back you can search you do have your options here so if you click here personal you can restart you can shut down get some information or you can go ahead and log out so back over to the package center let's take a look at some of the things we can do all right so possibilities are almost endless guys so you have mcafee right here they do have a free trial you have cloud station server cloud station share and sync you have a dns server option you do have itunes server media server you do have the video station and like I said, you have a lot of different applications, guys. And if you just wanted to search to see something was here, I know for me, Plex is a big one for me. Search for Plex. And there it is right there. So ton of applications, guys. They're always adding new apps. They're always pushing updates and definitely recommend it. They also do have options to do a manual install. So you can go ahead and essentially download applications and install it to the system, which is a great feature. Over to our control panel. And you can see you do have different options here as well. So shared folder, you can create shared folders, you can specify permissions, you can add users, you can do a lot of different things. You do have quick connect here as well. You do have your network configuration, DHCP server, Wi-Fi. You can check out your external devices, hardware and power, privileges, share folder sync, terminal, as well as SNMP. 
And that's a basic setup for this network attached storage. So I do plan on doing a lot of videos, a lot of follow up. I do my Plex servers, I do my surveillance station, also do my file server and a lot of cool videos in relation to this. This system has a lot of different ins and outs that definitely cannot cover in one video. But if you guys have special requests, drop it in the comments section below. So the 918 is 549, the 1019 is 649. And like I said, I will be leaving links in the description where you can pick them up on Amazon. I also will be leaving a link to the C Seagate hard drives that were sent over to me. So once again, big shout out to Synology, big shout out to Seagate. If you guys have any questions about this, drop them in the comment section below. Please hit the thumbs up on this video. Share this video if you think it might help someone else. Thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.